Our Milky Way is a vast structure containing millions of stars. It contains long stretching spiral arms which connect to the centre. At the heart of the Milky Way lies a vast bulge. At the core is an object of mystery that is connected to how the galaxy functions. The mainstream call this a black hole, assuming that somehow gravity is able to compress matter into a very small space. In the electric universe we would consider this object to be a plasmoid, possibly similar to the ones Eric Lerner was able to produce in his experiments. This would be a highly concentrated structure of plasma with intense electric and magnetic fields, compressing material into the torus and also streaming material out at the poles. Around this object sits a larger structure which stretches for about 700 light years. It is a dense zone of activity called the central molecular zone. Here you will find almost 80% of the entire galaxy's dense gas. It contains many dense molecular clouds that would normally be expected to produce stars, but are instead devoid of any. On top of this, the material is not stationary, moving at supersonic speeds of hundreds of kilometres per second. By comparison, the Maggi filament we examined in the last episode was moving at about 54 kilometres per second. If gravity was the only force shaping our galaxy, you would expect this central molecular zone to be centred on the black hole, and yet this is not the case. The central molecular zone is offset. They are able to identify two large-scale flows across this region, which suggests they represent one or at most two coherent streams of material. Scientists struggle to explain where the central molecular zone came from, nor how it can maintain its structure. One major problem facing astronomers is that there is so much dust obscuring our view of the central molecular zone, making observations in the visible spectrum impossible. Luckily, infrared, radio, X-rays and gamma rays can penetrate the dust. Gamma rays are the highest energy particles. These are thought to be produced when cosmic rays crash into ordinary matter. When scientists map the gamma rays towards the heart of the Milky Way, it revealed that something near the centre of the galaxy appeared to be accelerating particles to speeds approaching that of light, which in turn was creating an abundance of cosmic rays and gamma rays just outside the galactic centre. At the same time, something at the centre of the galaxy seemed to be preventing large portions of cosmic rays from other parts of the universe from entering. Scientists described the effect as an invisible barrier wrapped around the galactic centre and maintains a significantly lower density of cosmic rays compared to the rest of the galaxy. Something is allowing cosmic rays to escape from the centre but prevents them from entering. The scientists are at a loss to explain it. There may well be a simple explanation for this behaviour, but we will return to this in a short while. Twenty years ago, astronomers discovered a number of enigmatic radio-emitting filaments near the galactic centre. At the time, they defied an explanation. These filaments range from 10 to 100 light years in length and are no more than three light years across. Some of these filaments seem to be connected to concentrated areas of thermal emissions, which likely identified areas of star formation. They also detected upward streams which were non-thermal radio filaments. At the time, they thought that these two processes were linked somehow. Wind forwards nearly 20 years and new radio images reveal it in even more detail. Now they are able to see thousands of these filaments. If we zoom in to where Sagittarius A is located, we can see it as what appears as the brightly glowing eye at the bottom of the image. We can clearly see the large cloud structure that lies to the side of Sagittarius A. We can also see smaller filaments that seem to stream in or away from Sagittarius A. You will also notice the much larger filament that runs across the image and seems to bend around this structure. The mainstream explanation for these vertical filaments is now that cosmic rays streaming from the centre of the galaxy end up dragging the ambient magnetic field, compressing it and illuminating it. What remarkable particles can move and compress an imaginary construct? What could cause something to glow in radio? This is generally an indication that electrons are undergoing acceleration. So why would these filaments emit thermal radiation and others not? 
It is important to understand that we really do not understand what causes thermal emissions, nor that we can really label something as being hotter than something else simply by looking at the radio emissions. Here is an example of an explanation for thermal emission. The mechanism of radiation emissions is related to energy released as a result of oscillations or transitions of electrons that constitute matter. A consideration to make is that when electrons or other charged particles are exposed to an electric field, this will make them flow along the field lines. This could cause smaller oscillations to be removed, thereby dethermalizing the particles, making it appear as if they are cooler. If we are seeing the filaments glowing in radio, it does mean that there is an acceleration going on, and I see two different mechanisms for this. The first is that they are being accelerated towards or away from the center due to an electric field. The second is that the particles are following a helical path, causing a constant acceleration around the center. As we see electrons, we are likely dealing with a plasma which is flowing along these filaments. Now what about that barrier that seems to prevent cosmic rays from entering, but serve to accelerate particles from within the center outwards? One alternative explanation for this might be something that Hannes Althain felt was a piece of the puzzle that mainstream science continually ignored, the double layer. It was Langmuir who first discovered what is now termed as a double layer. A double layer is created in order to separate plasma from its environment. It can be considered analogous to a biological cell wall. Both streaming electrons and ions can also be present within these. So how could this explain the magical barrier? Cosmic rays are generally considered to be high energy protons or positively charged particles. So why might the core be deflecting these high energy particles and yet accelerating any that reside within it? This could be explained if we consider that the core of the galaxy is net positively charged or electron deficient, similar to how we consider a star to be electron deficient. The double layer that forms around this would therefore contain a positive charge on the inside and a negative one on the outside. Any positive particles within the interior which have enough kinetic energy to overcome the initial repulsion of the positive barrier will then feel an acceleration towards the negative edge of the double layer. The edge of the double layer is a dynamic zone which is constantly being replenished as ions get neutralized and neutral particles become ionized. The existence of this double layer may also explain why we see the larger filaments bending around this zone. If we examine the wider image with many filaments, we see that they seem to be spread across a wide area and do not seem to congregate to the central point. How could this be explained and why does everything not connect to the central plasmoid? I think at this point it is important to consider that there are a number of different models for how galaxies function and probably none of them are entirely correct. Antony Peratt's concept was that two intergalactic filaments would twist together and at a certain point along these filaments a double layer would form. This would collect material along the double layer and compress the material in between the filaments as they moved closer. He never modelled this central area but referred to the work that Eric Lerner had done on plasmoids as one potential for this central area. This would mean that the plasmoid that formed at the center may not directly be connected to the larger filaments, but instead the two filaments would connect to multiple parts and this in turn would stream in towards the central area. Halton Arp felt that galaxies were born from material ejected from active galaxies, which later turned into companion galaxies as they moved further from the parent. Here we could consider that these galaxies are already within a filament and that as the material gets ejected into the larger filament, new connections are forged. Possibly this material is initially electron deficient, so would draw streams of electrons towards it, which then later form the filaments that connect it. Now, it's equally possible that these vertical filaments are not part of any mechanism to connect to the galactic filament, but instead are filaments that are part of the internal structure of a galaxy. If we consider Hannes Alfain's concept of a galaxy, he thought that there was a circuit which pushed material out along the axis and back along the equator. There is much we still do not know and many open questions that these images raise. What is clear is that the more we look, the more we see these filaments. 
both in the interior of our galaxy and spread throughout it, as well as between galaxies on a vast scale. This material is not dormant but flows, some fast, some slow, powering our electric universe.